On the highest point of Zero Park, we are at an elevation of 1,200 feet above sea level. The rock beneath us is about 100 million years old and part of the so-called Franciscan assemblage. As a matter of fact, we are not too far from the spot where, in 1769, explorer Gaspar de Portola was the first European to lay eyes on the San Francisco Bay. A small event, yet one that created a frontier to last for more than a century. People came in great numbers and brought with them rapid transformation to a landscape that had seen little change in millennia. Already part of a national park since 1974, Zero Park itself was established in early 2018 with the goal of restoring the area to its natural appearance. Presently covering an area of 40 square miles, it constitutes a novel part of the Chaparral and Woodlands ecoregion that forms an elliptical ring around California's Central Valley. The local climate is classified as warm summer Mediterranean. A plethora of plants makes this place a beautiful garden. Ramnus californica, for instance, commonly known as the coffee berry, is a flowering plant of the family of the buckthorns. Their leaves and the fruit which resemble coffee beans are an important part of the food chain, providing feed for a wide variety of birds and even the occasional black bear. The coyote brush, Baccarus peularis, is a native evergreen shrub it is a secondary pioneer plant that in the Chaparral ecoregion usually grows after fires. The coyote brush is native to California and is rarely found beyond its borders. In contrast to that, the ice plant, Caprobrotus edulis, is an invasive species. It is a creeping, mat-forming succulent that was planted in California in the early 1900s in order to stabilize soil along railroad tracks. It has escaped from cultivation and now poses a serious ecological problem by competing directly with other, often endangered species, for nutrients, water, light, and space. In physics, the term escape velocity describes the speed at which the kinetic energy plus the gravitational potential energy of an object is zero. To reach it means to be able to break free from the pull of a planet or a star. On August 16, 2020, the Sun was 94,114 million miles away from the Earth. From the relative position of an observer standing at zero park, it rose at 6.27 a.m. and set at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. When zero park's ecosystem was designed, careful consideration was given to the actual requirements of the materials to be produced. Great advances in the genetic engineering of plants now allow us to set precise triggers for carefully designed metabolic processes within the organisms and indeed ones that cascade through entire ecosystems. In our case, this trigger was set to be a day length of precisely 13 hours, 33 minutes, and 41 seconds.
It had been previously determined that for a launch on August 24th, the fuel harvest should commence on August 16th, and that a total amount of 257 tons of liquid methane would be required. Combined with 822 tons of liquid oxygen acting as oxidizer, it will produce a thrust of 2.5 million pounds, accelerating our spacecraft to an escape velocity of 36,900 miles per hour to put it into a home and transfer orbit. If all goes well, the voyage to Mars will take 412 days. While the ecosystem of Zero Park was designed to resemble, as closely as possible, the natural biome, many species of both flora and fauna have been significantly altered to meet our goals and intentions. We use carpenter bees as vector animals to deploy the modified DNA through pollen to the target organisms such as the coyote brushes, which are responsible for the separation and condensation of the liquid oxygen. Using the means of synthetic biology, they have been redesigned to perform what is known as the Joule-Thompson effect. The desired cooling occurs when air is forced through a valve, in this case the cleverly realigned leaf stomas of the coyote brushes. As the air rolls over the hills, a total of 2.9 million cubic meters, it is gradually cooled down, plant by plant. It is worth pointing out that this is the first instance of living machines reproducing this previously industrial technique. As a matter of fact, it is the first cryogenic effect ever to occur in any known life form. While an unmodified organism would quickly sustain damage from the extreme cold, our plants produce the nucleating proteins originally found in Rana sylvatica, the North American wood frog, as a cryoprotectant. In order to collect the condensing liquid oxygen from the air, the abundant local population of Holocnemius plucae, the marbled cellar spider, have had their behavior altered so they spin vast webs across the branches of the low coffee berry shrubs. The webs essentially function as self-assembling fog nets. These fog nets catch the condensed liquid until the harvesting teams arrive. The actual fuel, liquid methane, is produced by our version of the invasive ice plant. Ice plant grows fast and produces a lot of biomass quickly. Roughly 209 acres provide enough energy for one launch. As succulents, their leaves are heavy and their water content is high, making them not unlike the wine grapes of the Vitis plant, which of course has been an industrial organism for more than 2,000 years. On August 16th, catalytic enzymes, inspired by those found in methane-producing anaerobic microorganisms, are released from the so-called carboxysomes, little storage units within the plant's own cells. The organisms then effectively digest their own cellulose while producing gaseous methane, which inflates the leaves. Each plant produces 0.19 cubic meters of methane per kilogram of biomass. Then, as the chilled air rolls in from the coyote brush areas, the methane is cooled. Not yet to the point of liquefaction, but enough to increase the density of the gas, making its harvesting easier and safer for our workers. They collect the whole plants, crush them to release the gas, and store it alongside the liquid oxygen until the vehicle is ready for fueling. A great benefit of this technique is that the invasive ice plants are destroyed in the process, which frees the area previously covered by them, making the ice storm have an effect akin to a natural wildfire. Our efforts are not unlike those of the conservation movement. 
along with metabolic engineering at the scale of landscape, we aim to restore the land to its natural appearance, yet we do so much more. We are giving ideas back to nature. The factories of the future will be beautiful. Those living machines marry the combined efficiency of 3.8 billion years of evolution with human ambition. Our choice to produce rocket fuel was therefore all but coincidence. A mere third of a square mile of our invisible facilities transforms energy from the sun into enough fuel for one launch to Mars. Zero Park is a landscape that is not really part of this world.